On a cold November night last fall, the McGill community decided to pass a new referendum to keep the Black Students Network as a student service. But this was not exactly a victory. The vote was close, with 54.7 voting yes and 45.3 voting no. While happy about the good news, members of the BSN have had to face the fact that their existence on campus is not exactly welcomed with wide, open arms. Is the McGill community as diverse and equitable as it claims to be? TVM News speaks to the BSN exec team to hear about their organization, their experiences on campus and beyond, and black identity. I remember, like, kind of craving a, a black presence, like in res and things like that. I, I was like, oh, I want to make some black friends. I haven't met any other black students yet. I haven't met any you know, anybody from the Caribbean or from, uh, from like where my dad's from, like in Congo and stuff like that. And I was looking forward to having that diversity in university that I lacked in boarding school. It's been a really great opportunity to meet people, especially people of color, because I definitely come from, I come from a part of Toronto where there just isn't many. So it was good to be exposed to that. It's like the first time I've been exposed to like this many people of color. Um. I've never been forced to identify as black because I don't know, like, how do you identify as black? Now, black is my skin color, yes, but in Africa, no one goes around saying you're black. I mean, in Cameroon, depends on probably, I don't know the context in South Africa, but in Cameroon, no one goes around saying you're black, you're white, you're this. Everyone's black. I'm from the Cayman Islands, and my mom's white and my dad's black, and I always struggle for the longest time as to like how I identify myself as being a mixed person, especially in the Caribbean, where shadism, shadism is pretty rampant. So I never, I would never have felt comfortable back home growing up being like, oh yeah, I'm black. Like, I couldn't really fit in fully in my community. So I don't think uh, there is a clear question to black identity. Like you no. would never find that. There's no, you won't open the Oxford dictionary like black. Yeah. No, like, no, like it's but not. But I think, as you were saying earlier as well, though, it's like society also does try to present mm. this like clear cut like yeah. I don't know, yeah. archetype of what a black person is, especially in media. And I think that yeah. like yeah. influenced the way it, like me growing up, like how I looked, at, you know, and saw myself. Yeah. All my friends have been white growing up, and so I was always like black and aware of that blackness but then when I interacted with black people I felt like uncomfortable and rejected from that environment as well which is why I didn't join BSN for two years because I didn't feel like I was black enough. You as a black identifying person or even if you don't identify as black but you do know that you're you know a racialized person but you internalize all the negative connotations yeah. of blackness that, you, that are presented to you in your environment whether it's to the media a black personal identity is for you to make of your own. There's no clear cut, there's no, you would like, you would embrace it when you're ready to, or it's just, it's totally personal. So, so yeah, so three years ago when I was the first year liaison, um, one of the things that really shocked me was the amount of hate mail that we used to get back then for BSN. And the content of the hate mail was especially shocking. So. Um, one of the former BSN presidents at the time was writing for the McGill Daily, and she basically had free reign to write whatever she wanted, and she wrote a lot about racial tension and race relations, and um, there were some people on campus who really didn't like that. So they leaked her personal information, her phone number, her address, and these kind of things, to, and a photograph, of course, to a white supremacist website who uh, then distributed this information and shared it about her. And she was literally scared. She was scared. I, I mean, I don't know how, how serious um, she thought it was, but the fact that these people who basically you know, hated her and expressed that they hated her online and expressed the desire to kill her, let's kill this bitch, let's go find her, blah, 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 let's rape her, let's do all these things, had these personal details of hers that had been leaked through, you know, at who knows which student on campus. And what was disturbing about that was that you'd... Uh, you see similar things in the inbox, for example. You see similar things like death threats. You see other threatening things. You see things uh, calling us racial slurs. You niggers. You this. You that. Not like on campus, but I remember like there were two McGill. Like I don't know if it was smooth, but it was one of those first year res parties must have been. Mm -hmm. And I remember outside of a club in line, and ooh, I heard some ignorant comments. And like a girl called me like nigger in French once. And I heard a guy tell me that, because uh, he asked me, like, trying to hit on me, where are you from? And then I'm like, so I, was like I was like, oh, I'm from Canada. Like, don't talk to him. He's like, wait, no, because I'm half Canadian. I'm like, yo, I have Canadian passport, I'm Canadian. Like, whatever. Uh, he's like, um, no, you can't be Canadian. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't be Canadian. He's like, because I'm black? He's like, no, I didn't say that. Okay, well, wait, whoa. And he got so offended that he went to this complete extreme where, like, rant where he was saying, oh, like, what did he say? Because I am aggressive. No, he said, I'm aggressive and, and sassy because I'm black. And that's why. 
I'm like rejecting him hitting her. Anyways, yeah. I heard some really <laughs> lovely thing. And again, like I've never faced that kind of stuff until it came to McGill. Like it's it was eye opening. I feel like the new racism is denying that race even exists and that yeah. it's even a problem. So then you can't even tackle the race like the racial issue itself if the perpetrator is saying, well, I'm from sea color and race doesn't exist and uh, you know, well you're the racist because you're the one who's always talking about race. Well, yeah, the race card. Race. It's true that like it's the little things that make you f that like pile up on each other that feel worse than not worse, but feel as bad as like someone straight up calling you a nigger. Yeah. We give it to y'all too. We we are a service for the entire Miguel community. We like all of our events are completely open. We don't even have members. We don't have members like any like, like the entire Miguel community. Yeah, if are you our members, yeah. pay to part. go <laughs> to school and are part of SMU, you are one of our members. We love having new people, like constantly meeting new faces, like any type of services. Like, and we'll, I mean, we'll try our best to like. I guess we're gonna keep trying to be more in inclusionary, you're gonna try collaborating in the future with even more groups. I have black students on campus who feel that there is no need for a BSN. Yeah. And who feel the need to challenge us in our inbox, uh, argue that. Or students who don't go to McGill. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or even citizens don't us. go to McGill, uh, telling us that, um, what was one of the arguments? It was uh, like, the fact that there is like a black students network presence is self-victimizing. Uh, self yeah, yeah. And all these other things, and there's no need. Then, if there's no need, then why are there so many people asking us to put on these events? Why, if there's no need, why are there so many people coming and in turn thanking us for the events or asking us when's the next one? What are you doing next? Wanting to stay updated. Like, clearly, there's a desire. I mean, we are a political group, and we are tend to be politically one way, but that doesn't mean that we are exclusionary. Um, and if people want to like learn more about the Black community and. McGill or the Black Students Network, like we're super open to that. All the negative, we get a lot of positive. Like, yeah, we shouldn't right. like put that aside. Like yeah. after every discussion, people are like thank you for having this discussion. Anyone, black, white, Asian, they always like thank you for having this. Like <laughs> I learned so much. I love this. I love this. So it's very positive. And those are people that actually like make us want to even better ourselves. Exactly. You know, because they are negative. there. You know, we we negative. love all people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Come to our events. Come to our parties. Come to our talks. Or just nice. come hang out and read a book if you want yeah. to. Like the, make when new the doors friends. Open. Like, honestly, just make yeah. new friends. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Some students are hesitant to join the Black Students Network due to their own personal non-Black identity, despite BSN's mandate of being inclusive to all. McGill University strives to be a safe space for every student, no matter what race you identify with, what gender you are, or what political party you align with. But the experiences of the BSN exec team have shown that the McGill community must work on making this a reality, rather than just rhetoric to hide behind. This issue of racial identity goes beyond the scope of our campus, but the discussion starts here.